Welcome TSS family. I'm Matt Wachlinski. I'm at the Strength Shop and I'm answering some questions. Gareth asked me, how would I structure a full body workout? So I'm going to talk about a couple principles of a daily program. So how would you structure a full body workout? Obviously first, make sure you warm up thoroughly. Focus on things that are uh, important for you to get better at your goals and your situation. If you're really tight and flexible, you're going to need a lot of stretching. If you're already a very limber person, you might not need as much stretching, but you should still get your body warmed up, lubricate the joints. And not it's not even just um, preparing the body physically, but it's also preparing the body mentally. So take that moment, just like before, every um, game, you, you know, you, uh, you play the national anthem, people play that national anthem, you sit there and you focus, and that's that mental preparation. It's a very emotional thing, so get yourself emotionally prepared before you work out, and that occurs in your warm up. It's not just about the joints and the muscles, it's about the mind too. So warm up and get yourself ready, have your plan ready to go. Principle number two high skill and um, high speed and high power, high skill exercises and lifts are going to be performed early in the workout. Um, so big range of motion exercises. If you're into Olympic lifting, like snatching, clean and jerking, big movements with high skill executed at a, a high velocity are going to be performed early in the workout um, after your warm up. Um, not everyone is into Olympic lifting. Um, if you're into bodybuilding, for example, you're probably not going to be doing too many full body workouts. Bodybuilders thrive on doing body part splits. They're going to do, you know, a shoulder day, a arm day, a back day, a chest day, a leg day, and and that's fine. And I, I love that. But I go in different periods of what I'm doing. I don't try and do everything all the time. I'll do um, focused. 12 to 16 week programs trying to accomplish one thing instead of just trying to do everything all at one time. And that, that's fine too, but it's just not what I do. Um, so high skill, high speed, high power, high velocity, big range of motion exercises. First, when possible, you're gonna alternate your pulling and pushing exercises. So um, not necessarily you know set for set, but you can do like squatting into some RDLs, um, upper body pressing into some pulling. So that's that's a good one to stay balanced instead of doing all pushing and then all pulling. Um, now with general physical preparation and beginners, lots of variety is key with beginners because you're trying to keep things fun, interesting and engaging. So lots of variety of exercises there because they're going to respond to everything. Um, but when you do have a lot of variety, Keep the skill level low and focus on the basics. Always focus on the basics with beginners. Um, with specific physical preparation, you're going to need much less variety because there is specificity in there, there. And with specificity, you're going to need to practice just what you're trying to get good at. Um, <clears throat> but with specificity, you're not going to be doing, again, not a ton of full body workouts there, unless you're in, again, if you're into Olympic lifting. And Olympic lift is everything from your fingertips to your toenails. Um, full body, every single lift, snatching, cleaning, jerking, things like that. Um, now, complexes and circuits are fantastic, but you have to use them when they're appropriate. If you are a beginner and you're not sure how to do certain exercises or you have shoulder or knee limitations and you're trying to do a, a complex with a barbell or a circuit with multiple objects, um, training tools, and you're just not good at certain things, you shouldn't be doing those under high stress and high fatigue. You should practice one thing at a time until um, your, your technique is safe safe enough to, to, to perform the exercise sufficiently. Um, num rule number one, do no harm. Don't get anybody hurt. So when I'm doing complexes and circuits, I keep the skill level very low, and that's going to be um, individualized per individual. If, if, if someone can do snatches all day long with good technique, even when uh, they're fatigued, their form doesn't break down, that's fine. But someone who doesn't know how to do a, a snatch, and you're running them through a circuit of snatching, kettlebell swings, running around the block, and they come back, and now they're huffing and puffing, they're supposed to snatch again. That's very, very poor programming. So make sure that they're doing the skill level first as practice, 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 practice. Get full recovery before you practice your next set or rep, and then uh, keep things very simple and low level of, um, of skill when you're doing those, uh, those complexes. And like I said, that's, that's individual 
based, based on the person and what their, their current skills are. Um, short range of motion is going to be at the end of the workout. So for example, if you're doing cleans up here, clean and jerks, towards the end, you could be doing your shrugs and your farmer's carries, um, uh, sh you know, swings, shorter range of motion exercises towards the end where you're trying to isolate a muscle, where you're trying to integrate full body athleticism, full body integration towards the beginning, shorter range of motion, isolation towards the end. The, the skill level is very low, your body's fatigued, and you can just focus on one thing at a time. Um, so generally speaking, full body exercises into lower body exercises into upper body exercises. This is going to be the level of stress um, right there. Uh, so for example, clean and jerks into your squats into uh, bench pressing and pull-ups. I hope that gives a um, pretty good idea. Any more questions, let me know. Matt Wichwinski.